in this first section what we're going to be doing is describing what these assembly language instructions actually do. So this first one we're moving the value which is store that 10 plus address in R10 to register 6. So if R10 equals 0x F802 we get what's in 0x F8 zero C so we're adding 10 to it and looking at that memory location getting what's in that memory location and loading that one into R6 so the next one we're adding the value in R8 to value in R6 and we're storing in R6 uh, next one we're essentially saying R9 equals R9 minus 32 where 32 is a value not a memory address this one we're performing a bitwise end between bits in R7 and 5 and we saw the result in R5 now this one we're flipping all the bits so if they are high they'll go to a low if they are low they'll go to a high uh, rotate left arithmetic so we rotate all bits in R9 left once and we shift to zero in the bottom uh, this one rotate right through carry so rotate all it's right once in R9 in R7 most significant bit comes from carry and least significant bit becomes the new carry okay our next one we're comparing the values in R6 and R7 um, doesn't change R6 and R7 so they stay the same uh, but it will update the flags Uh, like our zero flag for example okay jump not equal uh, this is the same as a jump not zero so if zero flag not set will jump most common place would use something like this is if we did a compare beforehand we compare two things together if they weren't equal we're going to jump um, this is an unconditional jump so it will jump regardless of any other flags or anything and it will jump to label 2 and finally we have jump equal so if our zero flag is set
then we jump the zero flags not set we don't jump okay in this next section we're looking for a line of code that will perform each of these operations for us so decrement the value in r9 that's simply dec r9 multiply r7 by 2 to multiply something by 2 we want to shift it to the left once so we do a rotate left arithmetic r7 add number 43 to r5 we say add we put our hash there to indicate that we're using immediate and r5 invert 7 and 0 and r8 so to invert just a few bits we use our xor and we need to specify that it's an immediate value and we're looking for bit 7 and 0 so 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, 0 put a B there to indicate this is a binary number and R8 jump to location label 4 so this is an unconditional jump so jump label 4 if the carry bit set jump to label 5 so JC jump carry label 5 set bits 3 and 4 so we use a bit set to do this we use our hash to say that we're doing immediate and we say bits 4 3 2 1 0 put a B for binary and R6 compare R8 and R7 CMP R8 R7 clear bits 5 2 1 0 so we use the bit clear uh, put a hash to indicate we're doing immediate 5 4 3 2 1 0 in R9 disable all interrupts to do this we use the d int command disable interrupts and do nothing for a cycle that's simply the NOP or no operation instruction okay this next one looks conspicuously like a lab that you may or may not have done uh, we're implementing a Fibonacci algorithm using some loops and basically the way the Fibonacci algorithm works is it adds a current number to a previous number and then derives the next number so this lends itself very well to being in loops uh, so I've written this very slightly different to the labs in terms of the the registers that we're actually using but let's first draw a flow diagram and the flow diagram will help us solve it very easily so we've got uh, three registers we use for the counting and we use a further register for the controlling of the loop so we'll have R5 will be the first register so we'll say R5 equals 0 uh, R6 will equal 1 so that's the next Fibonacci sequence and we'll say R7 will be our count value so R7 equals okay we then want to do the Fibonacci part of the loop so we essentially say uh, R8 we'll use that to store our next value so R8 equals R5 plus R6 so we add the two together then we kind of need to shuffle them backwards so we can run this loop again so we say R5 is equal to R6 and then R6 is equal to R8 which was the new value we just computed so we've shuffled them back we then want to decrement R7 by 1 because that's our loop counter R7 equals R7 minus 1 and then we want to say if R7 equals 0 we'll stop counting so true we're complete false we keep on going and we'll keep on going right up to 
here. Okay, there's our flow diagram. Now we can write code for that very, very simply. Uh, for example, we say move 0 to R5, move 1 to R6, move 8 or however many cycles we want to count to R7. We have to do this in two instructions. So move R5 to R8 and then add R6 to R8 and we're just going to shift some registers back again so move R6 to R5 move R8 to R6 uh, we're going to deck R7 and well that's not zero so jump not zero we want to keep on looping and we want to loop up to this point here so we'll put a label in there and so that will keep looping around back to here for us so there we go Fibonacci algorithm okay final question write code based on a loop that will sum the contents of memory locations uh, 0 x f d 0 0 to 0 x f d o a and we want to store the result in r5 so way that naturally brings itself to do this is using indirect auto increment addressing there's a few different ways we could do it we could do it manually but if we do indirect auto increment it will auto increment the address and go on to the next one each time uh, that we need to go through so let's first reset R5 so move 0 to R5 we could also say clear R5 it will do the same thing move our first address so 0 x f d 0 0 to R6 we'll use R6 for keeping track of where we are what we'll then have is we'll have a loop so we need a label for a loop and we'll say add indirect r6 plus r5 so go to r6 look at what memory address is stored there go to that memory address and add that value to r5 and then increment by 2 because it's a word instruction Okay, that was the main part for us. Then we need to compare and we need to see whether we've hit our end condition. Now in this case, because we're doing this computation and incrementing before we do our test up here, we'll have to go past because we want to include memory address location FDOA. So we go to the next word after FDOA and we compare that against R6 and we say jump not equal. We could also say jump not zero, we'll do the same thing to loop.